Hello everybody in the chess world and today I'm going to show you six miniatures from super strong GMs. Yes, yeah, six because you know this thing about the top five and top ten is kind of getting a little bit old. So yeah, why not six? So for the first game, okay, I'll be cheating a little bit because this is going to be definitely two super GMs, Taimur right above with the white pieces against Gawain Jones with the black pieces. But why did I say that I'm going to cheat? Well, because <laughs> Taimur was seven years old and Gawain was 10. So yeah, you know, when I was seven, well, hell, even when I was 10, I couldn't even beat anyone at tic-tac-toe. So, you know, <laughs> pretty admirable, but okay. So this was the um, under 10 uh, European Championship in Cannes in 1997. And again, Taimur was white. So he started with knight f3, knight f6 by Gawain, b3, g6. Well, in all of those games, you'll see that uh, I'll pass the, the moves pretty quickly because we'll see, in general, let's put it like this, correct openings. But at some moment, we'll see a big mistake yeah, before move 15 and... This is what what going to, you know, lead the game into a miniature. So, first, we see this and, and we say, well, okay, the double fianchero by white really doesn't seem like a miniature material opening, you know, it's like super passive. But, okay, they were, they were but little children, so, yeah, mistakes were bound to happen. And here, okay, c takes d5, knight b4, queen c1. So, up to here, everything is fine, but here uh, Gawain played a bishop f5. This was the first dubious move. Um, apparently, well, everyone was recommending like b6 after the game. And I think even queen takes d5 was a decent move. But yeah, after bishop f5, knight h4, this bishop is now probably feeling a little bit awkward. And Gawain just took the, the knight and then played rook c8. But uh, bishop h3, this is an exclam, you know, a good move. Because... Um, well, really precise. You know, now it will be too sad for Gawain to play rook c7 and, you know, there's even bishop e5. So he played the more understandable knight d7. But yeah, after the exchange of, of bishops in e4, well, you know, white just kept his extra d pawn. Well, black can never even take here because, like, you know, on, on a2, sorry, on, on a2 because, you know, we have this check and we'll take it. And after King G8, well, A3 simply is already, yeah, really winning for White. And the end was Knight A6, D3, you know, now everything is solid. There's no C4, we have Queen H6 now. And that's what happened. Rook C7, really passive move, but hard to recommend anything for Black. Queen H6, Knight 95, and the last sequence was F4. And yeah, gifting this D3 pawn, but... Yeah, knight f5, and yeah, Gawain resigned because queen g5 mate is coming. And, well, you cannot play g takes f5 because of bishop takes f5, and then the mate will be on, on h7, so there was nothing else to do. I guess a little bit before, in here, in here, had he played knight f5, well, I guess technically you can take it because the knight will be able to come back here, but yeah, he was... Still gonna go under pretty quickly. Well, we'll, we'll, we're gonna see some French defenses, and the first game is going to be between. Uh, yeah, we're here. Yeah, Michael Adams is gonna beat in a miniature um, Thomas Luther. Okay, he wasn't that strong. This this is an old game, and Luther was twenty four oh five rated. Adams was 25-50. Uh, this was a time where, yeah, 25 was more like a 26, 26, 20 of nowadays of inflation because of inflation in, in ratings, of course. But okay, the game was E45, a normal French. Again, we'll, we'll, this Tarash line, we'll see something super theoretical. Even, well, I myself, I don't play the French with either color, but I think I actually know this line or I have seen some classics on this line. Um, so here knight takes d4, a6. Uh, well, here's some rookie one. Queen c7 is hitting this bishop. 
the bishop goes away, uh, bishop d6 hits the h-pawn, the h-pawn does the same. Meanwhile, it will prevent any, you know, knight g4 possibilities. Castles, bishop g5, and up, you know, up to here, everything was well played by, by both sides. But here, Luther, he, he not only makes a big mistake, it's, it's, it's a mistake that it was really criticized because it, it, it shows how he really knew nothing about this line because he actually played 97 as in saying, you know, I don't want to allow uh, white to double pawns on f6 with bishop takes f6, which could be, yeah, a move. But yeah, the thing is that theoretical move, the, the theoretical move in here is to play h6, even to 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 force or to invite white to take to take on f6. That that was the the correct move. So the other problem with knight d7, well, is not only proving how he really remember nothing about the opening. The problem is that there is a blow that uh, Adams actually saw, you know, boom, rook takes e6. Okay, not so, so hard to see, but uh, definitely winning. Uh, well, in here, it's impossible to to capture that rook. It might be obvious because after knight takes, we hit the queen, and after queen b8, yeah, we, we could play knight c7 check here and would probably be winning. But even worse, knight takes f8 is it's even better because it think it seems like the most like caveman move. But the truth is, after king takes f8, queen d5, and we have two mates, you know, queen f7 and queen g8 mate with uh, this bishop on g5 cutting across. So not even knight e5 is gonna save you. This is just gonna be mate. So going back, okay, uh, they do mention that the best move here was queen c5. This was this was the best defense, but. They say that well, one option for Adams was was to already sacrifice the exchange. You know, with rook takes e6 is already probably an advantage for White, and and there were more options. But okay, in the end, uh, Luther played h6. He starts to go astray here. You know, bishop yeah, bishop e7 is really precise. I think this was bishop takes e7 was probably the best defense here, but. Luther is still losing. He desperate. He gives this check, and after King H1, Knight C5 hit in the rook. But once Adams Adams played this rookie two, Luther just resigned again a miniature because he saw that well, <clears throat> this uh, rook is certainly attack, and he can't even play rook E8. You know because we could, uh, you know um, we can just take here. Yeah, the rooks are facing each other, so you have to. Discharge on, on on e2 rook takes queen takes queen check and this is over you know if you put if you put the queen in on, in front this this check will <laughs> win the queen because yeah the queen is pinned she cannot <laughs> take the bishop and it's not too different king h7 bishop takes f7 well yeah he's about to play bishop g6 check you cannot de even develop the bishop because the rook is is hanging to, to the queen so yeah it was big disaster so. Third game, we'll see another French, but in this position, we'll see instead of knight d2, we'll see knight c3. And this, again, a game against two really strong opponents, uh, Alexander Kalifman with, with, with white, and with black was uh, Pedra Nikolic. And this, again, a not-too-old game, I think, from the 90s. They were both almost 2,600. And pretty quickly they play this uh, win hour, one of, of the lines. Everything cool up to here. Up to here is still fine. Okay, and here already move 10. First, uh, apparently a considerable mistake by Pedro Nikolic, who played just f6 immediately. Um, everyone was recommending after the game c4 first. Okay, bishop takes f5, now it's a possibility, but the idea is that if now bishop e2, well, then you can go f6. But in the game, it was, well, g4 came. And this is, it's like Nikolic is getting into a chaotic position that he cannot actually afford. Uh, c4 came, but g takes f, c takes e3, rook g1, and 
yeah, look how funny this is because, um, okay, Rook G1 is not a, a difficult move to find. It, it certainly brings, uh, gives a good attack for white. But look at, at, at what followed because Nikolic played E takes F5. I think the commentators were saying this was like the last mistake, but they did not even recommend anything. Like, black is probably already lost in here. However, look at this. After pawn takes and the obvious bishop H6 and the obvious Rook F7, this was bound to come once black and white had played rook g1 king g2 <laughs> i mean this is this is this is beautiful and and quite strong and this this was quite quite amazing for me now there's no way to prevent the big blow that uh, califan is gonna give to nikolic and, and it's really funny bishop takes g7 is simply the uh, the threat and taking everything on g7 you know, like the threat is just to, yeah, bishop takes g7, rook takes, will play rook takes g7, king takes, and rook g1. And it's, yeah, we can replace this rook on g1. So in the end, we'll have like this rook and this queen against this poor and a long uh, king, a black king. So this is the idea. And, well, in the game, Nikolic played bishop e6. And actually, yeah, he received the bishop takes g7, rook takes. King takes, rook takes, and here on move 18, he actually resigned, and he was right, because, well, both king f8 and king, king h8, they will lose too, too easily. Uh, the king f8, the problem is that after queen takes, yeah, queen takes h7, you cannot prevent rook g7 followed by queen h8 mate, right? I mean, who's going to do something about that? Uh, well or some queen e7, queen h8 check, and, well, the rook on a8 is lost, isn't it? Right, yeah. However, uh, well, what else is there? Is king, king h8, yeah, king h8 is the other, but, yeah, knight h4, this is threatening this deadly check. Knight e7 will prevent that, but then e takes f6. Queen e8 is the only move, this is a funny sequence. Queen h6, uh, threatening the mate on g7, so queen f8 only move. Rook g7, now mate is going to be on h7, so bishop g8 only move, and finally, okay, the last piece will join the attack, and let us say, I don't know, d takes c2, knight g5, h7 caves in, uh, finally, and yeah, th this will be over. But another detail, let's go back, I, I, I said that after king d2, there's no way to prevent bishop takes g7. One example is, yeah, what we saw in the game, but, you know, even queen f8, which let's say will be the only mode trying to do something about it we well, yeah, again it receives this because uh well here if you take with the queen we obviously have this at least you know we, we have i uh, still have this knight of three so this is over and yeah king takes i'm sorry not queen uh king takes well again the check king h8 similar oh no even worse knight h4 with this uh, knight g6 idea and after knight e7 pawn takes he can't even recapture because there will be queen e8 and it'll be over. So yeah, quite quite quickly, but quite nice that 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 whole sequence. Rook g1, king d2. Okay, finally we will see a Sicilian. I know everyone wants to see a Sicilian, although I don't play it with either color. But yeah, everyone wants to see a Sicilian. So yeah, I I get it, you guys. I'll I'll do it. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, Ivanchuk against Alexon. This was a, it was a rapid game, to be fair. But we will see a quite a terrible mistake by Alexon. I made a mistake. <laughs> because yeah, a normal Sicilian, and well, again, we'll see normal theoretical opening moves by both sides. Of course, they're they're both GMs, but uh, pretty soon, in this case, Alexon is going to make uh, quite a big mistake. Yeah, a big mistake. This, this is the first moment he plays b6. Already suspicious, right? I mean, Ivan Ivan should made it uh, simple, like knight takes e5, b takes e5, and e5. Yeah, he's hitting both the knight and the rook. This is not winning, but it is already um, quite an advantage for white. Well, white is better. Maybe black should play knight d5 immediately, um, or d, d, d takes e5 first. But bishop b7 is, well, as they say in the comments, the commentators actually said, you know, something like, 
This is a big mistake for a GM, even in a in a rapid game. Because, I don't know, after Queen H3, Ivanchuk is totally won. And, well, what can we say? I mean, again, I, I don't want to try to guess things, but we could only guess in a way that what Alexon did not play was that pawn takes, pawn takes, queen checks, received this, well, obvious blow, right? We're just winning a piece. We're removing the defender of, of the mate on h7. So now you, you simply cannot recapture. You're just a piece, a piece down. So, yeah. And, well, he before resigning, he actually, you know, introduced this bishop takes pawn check. A uh, last hope because... If Ivanchuk recaptures with the queen, well, we, you know, Alexon will recapture on f6. But obviously, Ivanchuk just played king takes g2, and now you're two pieces down. You still can cannot recapture the rook. You're still, you know, under a mate, mating threat on h7. Yes, too much. Alexon definitely resigned. So, so now we're gonna see Adam suffering. Adams will be the one losing the miniature against Dreyev. and this was the okay. They were young. Not as young as Radiabov and Gawain Jones, but um, it was the European Under-20 uh, Championship. So, again, uh, Dreyev is white, Michael Adams is black. So, Adams played this uh, Queen Sinian, which uh, kind of a weird line, this A5 wall. It makes sense because it came from Queen B3, but okay, up, up till, till he norm, normal moves. C takes d5, e takes d5, bishop f4, super normal. And here, okay, knight a6 is the first criticized move. Um, maybe Adams wanted to go a little adventurous, and I mean, the logical move was, according to everyone, the correct move is, you know, knight, knight bd7, the obvious move was kind of like the move you had to play. But okay, maybe Adams wanted to be a little creative. 95, according to yeah, the commentators, was a good reaction uh, by Dreyev. 94 by Adams, again criticized. Uh, they said, uh, again, a uh, mistake after mistake because C C5 was already much better. And after 94, Rook AC1, C5, like last mistake. You know, this is just losing. Um, it's like he didn't. I don't know, he did not see that knight takes e4, d takes e4, a3 traps the bishop. I don't know, I don't know if that's what's happened, what, what happened. But okay, g5 was maybe probably the last last hope for to maybe create some chaos and have something, but Drea made it, made it so simple, just a takes b4, g takes, and pawn takes. And it's over, you know. <laughs> I put that, that arrow in those... Yeah, bishop on b7 and pawn on b6 in red because this is their problem, you know. The, the b file is so full of weaknesses, not to mention them. They already lost material, but okay, considering that uh, vulnerability of the bishop on b7, Adams play bishop d5, but after queen takes b6, he, as the commentator says, he, he wanted no more, you know. This is plus three going, plus four for white, so okay, he resigned here. And for the last mistake, which is going to start by, by an English, but will transpose immediately into a Karakan, this is, well, two really strong players. Um, I have to assume this was a rapid game, even a blitz. I, I, I didn't get that information, but it's uh, Joel Lottier with, with the white pieces against Victor Bologan with the black pieces. <laughs> Both super strong. I think they were both like 2,600, and this was 1999. Again, 2,600 in that in those days. I could say that it's at 27 from nowadays, or at least 2,680. You know, it's much, much more. And again, I said before that I have to assume this was a rapid, either a rapid game or, or a blitz game, because the mistake by Bologan came too quickly, and it was a big mistake. So... Yeah, 95. So this is all theory. And I, in this position already, move 8 and double question mark uh, move by Bologan. Yeah, probably a rapid game. Maybe it's just, you know, it happens sometimes. But okay, here the theory, well, normally goes black plays g6, just to continue with bishop g7 and castle, normal chess. 
Or, well, they could play knight f takes d5, and after, let's say, bishop d3, well, again, g6, bishop g7, castles, normal check. But Bologan played in here, knight b takes d5, double question mark, uh, because, well, you can stop the video and think, but I don't think it's too, too hard, queen a4 check is just lights out, <laughs> you know, it's over. Uh, well, okay, we obviously cannot play b5 because bishop takes b5 and this is elemental you know the classical hanging rook on a8 and in the game uh, Bologan played bishop d7 but after knight takes d7 he had to resign he just resigned um, we obviously cannot recapture with the knight because that will leave this one hanging you know so the only possible continuation would have been rook uh, queen takes d7, but yeah, bishop b5. Again, the hanging rook on a8. And here, even it's worse than just the exchange, right? Because the fourth line will be taking that check, and here even even queen takes b7, hitting b5, hitting d5. If we take on b5, it's gonna be check. You know, again, it's too much. So he wanted no more. Um, I don't know. It was probably yeah, the, the, more like a, like a club game. But again, probably it could have been even blitz. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.